Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. I see Amanda and Jackie and Dawn and Tara and Buddy and Zane and Connie and Petra and Riley. Is it Petra or Petra? People pronounce it differently. You'll notice that um, we are muting you all and we can't see you either, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's kind of, the, that's kind of it helps us preserve bandwidth. So we always do this on our webinars. I'm Sarah Cooperman and I'm the CEO of SCW Fitness and I've got wonderful presenters with us today. Um, we're gonna be talking about hitting the bar. Yeah, what are you doing this weekend? And so we're gonna be talking about bar training can be a valuable addition to any trainer's toolbox. Bar is a great way to improve control, posture and alignment with our clients just to name a few things we can benefit from. And then we're gonna look at how we can incorporate different methods of fitness into our traditional bar training. And I'm really excited. We've got um, Siri Chalazi with us. She hates that this is the first thing I mentioned. I'm totally impressed. Not only is she wearing pink and the sweetest little girl you ever wanna see in your life. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna call you a girl because you could be my daughter. She is an Thank MBA you, from a Harvard Business School, a master's degree in public policy from Harvard Kennedy School, and a BA in chemistry and physics from Harvard College. She's not just a pretty little face. She's brilliant. And she is a program specialist for cardio yoga and rack the bar by, um, uh, it's pronounced a uh, Rakisa? Yes, rock the bar by Rakisa. Rakisa means female dancer in Arabic. That's where it comes from. Ooh, I love that. Rakisa. And other specialty certifications, Pilates, bar above, balatone, blah, 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 like multiple of these things. Um, we've also got Kia Williams with us. She has her, um, oh, uh, she's got her ERT, ERY, whatever. She's 200 hour yoga certification. How she handled that whole thing. I, I don't know. I, it is very impressive. She's an experienced group fitness instructor, personal trainer, yoga teacher. She's also the fitness director at the new lifetime fitness. That's going to be opening up in Chicago in the, in the river North area. Um, she's certified in just about everything. And she's also a program specialist for bar above fluid strength and balatone. And then we have Elizabeth Leonard. She's an international trainer. She's a content creator, a fitness guidance counselor. She's got her master's degree in education, educational psychology. Yeah, really, we're gonna have a therapy session right after this. And she uses counseling and coaching to influence movement. She's a national program director for Balatone, Bosu, Bar Above, Tabata, Water Rower, and Chaos. And then I don't even know how to in introduce Trisha Murphy Madden, besides being the person that saved my left foot. It's a long story. We'll share it another time. Um, Trisha is, has been really rocking it at the Mania Conventions doing our keynote presentation. She's the co-creator of Bar Above. She's been a program director of multiple, multiple training programs. She's one of the lead that keeps Xavier afloat. So we just, we're, we're just really blessed by all these people's um, uh, presence here. Uh, what a, what a skill set all these people have. And I also want to thank Beth Caney, who is helping to keep us all in line and running the webinar. So, um, now I'm going to just start, Trisha, I'm going to start with you. How does bar training differ from your regular group fitness classes? Bar training is a specific type of programming. Bar training was created by a dancer who was injured and she really discovered this type of training as a way to get back into shape so that when her injury was better, <laughs> she wouldn't be so out of shape. She could get back to the stage more quickly. And so I always like to think of bar training almost like a physical therapy program for a dancer that turned into this phenomenon that it is right now. And it's the best and easiest on your joint version of muscular endurance, in, in my humble opinion. And it's just, it's, it's a workout that feels great, leaves you walking out the door with a taller posture, 
more confidence in, in who you are and, and doesn't leave you sort of drenched with sweat and dying. It leaves you feeling invigorated. And I think that makes it really unique when it comes to what happens at the gym. That's interesting. I really liked the introduction. It's so funny. I, you know, we've been offering bar training at Manias for, I don't even want to, I don't, yeah, just a few years. And um, we've been doing Manias now. We're going to be entering our 39th year. Is that insane? That's insane. I, it's like owning a business amazing. for 40 years. Yeah. What the? It's what amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. But hearing your introduction and how it started, I think that's fascinating. Kia, when, before we turn the camera on, you were talking about the posture and alignment, and that was the unique blend. Um, and I really like the way you described how, how it differs from regular group fitness training. Sure. So the question that was asked of me is sort of what, what benefit is there of bar? What changes in people when they do it? So definitely posture and alignment. Maybe that has a lot to do with their confidence. I'm seeing people who continuously take bar classes with us setting their shoulders back. They walk taller. They, their chest is prouder. They just feel good about themselves. They move like gazelles. They're light on their feet, but they stand strong in their presence. So that's a lot to do with their posture points, setting those posture points, shoulders back, shoulders over hips, hips over heels, engaged core, long spine. It's a beautiful thing. And we were talking also about, you know, a lot of us started these, this program, started fitness, basically because we were dancers. And then what do you do? You know, you know, my aunt and uncle are not going to come watch me on stage anymore. I better find somebody else who's going to watch me. I'll teach group fitness. Right. Right. And, right. and and be able to pay my room and board while I'm in college. <laughs> that, that was right. <laughs> one of my motivations. But how did you start um, in group fitness, Kia, and then migrate to bar? What drew you to bar? Right on. So as Trisha mentioned earlier, bar seems to be a rehabilitation or physical therapy for injured dancers. But as an injured athlete who played compet uh, competitive volleyball for 15 years of my childhood before I sustained my first very serious injury, a lot of the moves that we were doing in physical therapy were reminiscent of things that I may have learned when I dabbled in dance about finding your balance, utilizing your feet, pressing all four corners of the feet into the ground, and then using a stabilizing surface to keep you balanced. And then when I'm introduced to a bar class, it all started to make sense and come back to me. The bar, which we all want to be beautiful dancers, at least I did. I dreamed of being on the grand stage, you know? And in my mind, that felt like my perfect opportunity. My hands are on the bar, you know? And I can dance. And to utilize something to help you keep your balance, to move your extremities right to left without falling over, which when you fall, don't you lose a bit of your confidence? Aren't you a bit embarrassed? Why do people laugh when other people fall? I don't know, it's silly. I guess it's funny, my nephew says, but it made me feel better as I was going through physical therapy. So it was just a perfect segue from athletics or sports into group fitness. And then years later, here comes bar. It was, it was a good transition for me. And I like the way you're um, kind of emphasizing at the beginning, you were emphasizing the mindfulness of the technique. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Elizabeth, do you integrate that into your traditional bar training classes? Oh, absolutely. Because when we when we talk about, um, you know, the balance part of bar, it's much deeper than using the bar as a means not to fall over. A big part of balance is having homeostasis in your body. So we know that we want the right side and the left side to be equally strong, equally pliable. We wanna have the front of the body and the back of the body equally strong. And we cover all of these things in, um, in bar training because we're working in multiple uh, planes of motion. So regardless of format, you can you can kind of sneak in bar training almost like you would broccoli to your children. Like it's something that we know is good for you. And you don't have to call it that if you don't want to. But I really feel, um, you know, bar has so many different benefits. And since we started talking about the physical therapy piece, um, I had spinal fusion, like major, major surgery. and. 
the, it was interesting just hearing Trisha say that. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm like, I didn't go to physical therapy after an eight hour spinal fusion. I went to the bar with a full brace welded on and everything. And that was my rehab after that surgery was bar and then going center floor for ballet. Had, had you been, oh, real quickly, guys, I just want to make sure we have, um, what was it? I think Beth told me 178 people that registered for this webinar. We'll have about, uh, my guess is between 50 and 60 people show up, but you guys that have shown up, please go to the bottom of your screen. You're going to see the green share button. Go to the left. You're going to see the chat box. Please click on it. Send us any questions. We've got these wonderful people with these fabulous expertise. If you have any bar comments, bar questions, go, you know, please share and voice your opinions. Um, Elizabeth, oh my goodness. Now, how did you injure your back? And had you been doing bar prior to mm -hmm. the back surgery? You know, what's interesting about that um, is scoliosis. So you know when you would go in school and you'd bend over and touch your toes and they'd do one of those things down your spine? They found it in fifth grade um, and then by seventh grade it had progressed so much that it was, it just had to, had to go. I actually had a stem unit before they were stem units and I had to sleep with it. But um, since you mentioned that, you know what was really interesting is yes, I was one of, I was very lucky. I started ballet when I was five years old and because of dance, I mean, I was, it was really bad. The curvature was, you know, over uh, 50 degrees. And that was just the top curve, but you couldn't see it physically. So the, the physical benefits weren't just so much aesthetic because I was a kid, but it was really functional and it kept my body healthy. So I was really, really lucky to have had that training. And uh, the physical therapy that I had to do before I had surgery is actually super similar to a lot of things that we do do in bar training on the mat. Hmm, interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Um, I have a pretty bad curvature in my back and um and then i do stupid things like um ski and i ran for oh my gosh i don't know 30 years um i was a runner and it, it's it's difficult i had trouble i was mentioning this before again before we turn the camera on that um i had trouble with my first bar class that i took because there was so much extension to the to the rear so many arabesques it was just it was pretty tough on me this is before i took like trisha's class or kia's class or series class like edamania and it's much more balanced right and left you know anterior posture was really much more balanced but i went and started doing the bar training in the pool and i really have to you know i agree with kia I found this like elegance almost, you know, the posture, the openness, because a lot of times we're working out and we just start, you know, <laughs> drilling down. And I just felt this openness and no, like Trisha said, you don't come out of there dripping wet and exhausted and in pain. You come out feeling longer and leaner and more in control. And like you said, Elizabeth, the balance. Now, Siri, how did you enter bar training and how do you find that it differs from traditional group exercise that you may have done? I also am one of those dancer background folks. So I started ballet when I was three and then transitioned to modern and jazz dance when I was about 11 or 12. So I spent a fair bit of my childhood growing up at the bar doing it ballet style. I just want to remind everyone that most ballerinas retire in their mid to late thirties or earliest in their latest in their early forties. So there's a reason, you know, ballet is aesthetically very beautiful, but it's not always the best for health and longevity. So what I love about today's bar and the way we teach bar group fitness is we take the best influences from ballet but we skip the stuff that modern research shows is not necessarily the best like you were saying Sarah all that ex excessive back extension arabesques really aggressive tucking um, of the pelvis and so forth as far as how it differs from other classes I would wholeheartedly plus one everything that Trisha and Kia and Elizabeth have just said but we got to talk about the bar burn because um, at least for my people that's the reason why they come to bar class right 
and where that really comes from, as Trisha mentioned right at the get-go, is the muscular endurance piece. Our time under tension is bought in bar for a given exercise is generally a lot longer than it would be in a different class. So in my strength conditioning or total body conditioning class, I might do 16 repetitions of a squat, maybe with some weights. We might do three sets of that, and then that's it for our squats. In my bar class, I would take that same squat. We'd start with eight to 16 repetitions of a full range of motion. Then we do half range of motion. Then we'd go one inch up, one inch down. Then we do an even smaller pulse. And then we'd maybe finish with a hold, adding some arms or hip movements or toys or pieces of equipment or whatever else before we move on. Um, so that's where that signature bar burn comes from. And to me, that's really unique to bar. But what's also beautiful is that because we talk about things in terms of range of motion, it's accessible to everybody. Yes, my full range of motion might be different from my 70-year-old participant's full range of motion, but we can do it next to each other, participate in the same experience, and both get a really solid workout for ourselves. Yeah, it seems like it's any age, and it also can be any level, because like you guys mentioned, you hold on to that bar. You hold. Some people are holding on for dear life, and other people are just, you know, you know, uh, balancing against the top. We got a few questions here, Elizabeth. I'm going to throw them at you, um, asking about: Can you do you recommend, let's say, doing bar training in the center of the room without a bar? What do you think about using a chair? Um, what do you think about? I know, oh God forbid, people touch each other these days, but you know, holding on and balancing with someone. Okay, hopefully wearing gloves and with tons of Purell just soaked through your entire body, but. You know, I, I you know, I'm gonna mention Balatone and it's a ballet inspired format and, and what it does. And so if you think about taking um, dance class um, as a child or as an adult, if it, was, if it was classical, you started at a bar. And then once you learn the skills, Right, because you are strengthening your feet, your your core, your lower leg complex, and I mean it was such a rite of passage when you know you've got point shoes or your your leg was long and flexible enough to go up one level for a bar, and then you know you could take everything center floor. So it actually the, taking you know anything that's bar and ballet inspired center floor. Um, is really, really powerful. And I mean, Bar Above was created originally to not use a bar for those reasons. So when we're center floor, um, we ha our core muscles have to work harder. So it's kind of like, you know, when you see sometimes someone in the grocery store and it's one of my big pet peeves and they're leaning over their grocery cart and you kind of want to give them a little love tap and tell them to stand up. Sometimes people do that at the bar and they're, they're leaning forward. That's the position that we're all in right now on our Zoom screens, on our computers. So now is the time to explore bar or a ballet inspired or some type of postural inspired format center floor because we've got to open up the front of the body, strengthen the back of our body and get out of that um, out of that posture. And that comes back to everything all of these amazing women have talked about in terms of setting your posture points and your balance and your alignment. We need that, not just to look aesthetically the way that we want to, but so we feel good from day to day. And, and I'll tell you, I feel a difference when it's a part of my regular routine, especially knowing that I have limitations. So that center floor piece um, is super beneficial. You know, what's interesting is um, I do a lot of research on what's going on with COVID, how are we going to get out of it, where where does fitness live in this horrible pandemic that we've survived? I'm using the past tense kind of a little aggressively, but I'm still going to use it. Um, but the number one reason people will exercise is fear of death, which I think okay, whatever. It's, you know, I'll take what I can to motivate people at this point, but that was the number one. Number two was actually aesthetics, which is interesting because we've always gone with these before and after photos, before and after photos. And we talk about body positivity and we've heard how negative that can be in individual self-esteem. Um, but I love the idea of um, not just longevity, but the feeling of strength and empowerment and mental wellness. Yes. And I look and I think about that posture and that opening up. 
And I also think about how are we going to counter the effects of the pandemic? And like you mentioned, the pandemic is that for, you know, that forward flexion and that whole forward, a forward head. And with the, with fire training, it really helps with posture and alignment and zoom burnout. <laughs> so I think that those are the, that's great to emphasize. I'm going to kind of lead into something a little bit different because I look at this, I'm like, how do we motivate more people to come and take our bar classes? Trisha, you tend to be pretty much an expert on social media. How do you think we can, in, if we can use social media to our advantage to really let people know about the benefits of bar? Oh, gosh, you know, I appreciate you saying that, but I feel yeah. like in five in, minutes or less, right? <laughs> yeah, I feel like the company I'm in, I'm like the least, um, I'm, I'm like the, the old lady in the room here um, when it comes to social media. You know, I think when it comes to social media, you have to first uh, serve the people you're going after. So right now, if, if you want to attract more men into your bar classes or in any of your fitness classes, you have to start to figure out what tips and tricks and recipes, whatever it is that will engage them um, and give them something uh, before you start to hit them up for what you can sell them. And I think that that process is a very um, specific linear journey. And for me right now, I think social media, the people that I see is highly successful in social media, and I, I'm looking at all of these incredible uh, women um, here is that they're consistent. And so if you watch the people that are are really thriving and attracting new members, they're really consistent. Um, so being able to commit to a social media plan is super important. Uh, Sarah, right now you have, uh, is it Amanda that's doing social media for SCW? Um, no, it's Robin, Robin Manis. Robin. Robin is so consistent, so I know what to expect. Uh, Robin's putting out there, hey, we're going to give you this webinar. The next message is, hey, did you know we do fitness education? The next message is, hey, by the way, we're doing this live in-person event. The next message seems to be, um, here's an article, here's something interesting, here's our newsletter. And then the final step seems to be that she's always then following up with, hey, if none of those work for you, we have the option for you to attend a SCW via live stream. So it's, it's almost like she's telling the story about your services without um, constantly saying, this is what we do and this is how we wanna sell you. So for me, it's just about helping people tell the story. I also am such a big believer in direct communication. So yeah. for me, my customers live, the, the people who take my classes, so I'm not talking about my bar above community, I'm talking about my customers, they reside really in emails and texts for me. Half of my customers aren't even on Facebook, or if they are, they might buzz in there once a month and post a picture of their grandchild. And there's nothing wrong with that. And actually, I congratulate all of them on that. So for me, I have to send, today I sent a follow-up uh, email. One of our students is a chef, so I then sent her recipe. So for each audience, I think it's different. So really from a social media perspective, you have to figure out who you're trying to attract and if they live on social media. And then you have to figure out uh, what your story is. What, how are you gonna connect with and give and brand before you market to them? And um, I would say in our industry, all three of these ladies do a really good job. Siri has become such a goddess in this department. She's so consistent in growing her uh, her following and, and has a, a clear system. And I think Amanda um, is just crushing it for you. Did I did I screw it up? Is it Amanda? Wait. Robin. 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 It's okay. I'm gonna fire Robin and hire. Robin is crushing it though. She's incredible. She's incredible. <laughs> She's amazing. Sorry, Robin. You're amazing. Uh, so anyway, that's my two cents. Um. Siri, how are you approaching uh, uh, promoting your bar training? You know, number one thing I pulled from Tricia is you got to have a landing page, okay? You got to have someplace solid that you own because Facebook, Instagram, you can post something that's that's thirty seconds. Now it's a minute. Now you can't and don't and do a reel and la la la, you know. And like now is first it's horizontal. Now everything is vertical. You know, it changes. 
But it's and nice heaven that. forbid social media goes down for 24 hours mm -hmm. then what? <laughs> oh my god yeah, dang. well along with your website <laughs> it's just i'm done i'm done i'm i'm yeah i'm moving to florida and uh oh, it's gonna open a farm okay so but siri so what do you do to to help promote your bar classes yeah, I, I will sp say briefly on that because that's been one of my most profound social media learnings. And Trisha is very general, but I'm really just a newbie. I've been even on Instagram less than a year. Don't tell anyone. Um, one of the very wise things that someone told me early on is remember on social media, you don't own anything. They could close your account any day for any reason. There could be a glitch. Your account could be hacked. There's just, that just happened to poor Dane Robinson, one of our SC Mania presenter colleagues. He had to start his account over from scratch. And so the advice that I got from the very beginning was try to use social media as a tool to direct people to where you ultimately want them. That could be signing up for your personal email list, for your club's email list. It could be them purchasing a subscription to your virtual studio, or if you have a physical location where you can direct them to. But but try not to leave them on social media because there you could lose them overnight and never be able to find them again. Try to get them as quickly um, to the end point. Um, so that's one piece of it. But then, of course, the other piece is, OK, whether you're talking to them on social media or not, what do you actually say? Um, I love to talk about the benefits of BAR and specifically about the benefits for different people. There was a great question in the chat about how we feel about combo classes like pedal and pulse, so spinning and BAR. I think that's a magnificent combination. Um, classes that are cardio focused like spinning or step or a high low aerobics class are folks who come to those classes and are getting the cardio that's a prime population to start talking to about the benefits of bar and say, hey, I love that you come to my Tuesday night step class. I was just teaching step aerobics before this. I'd love for you to come try bar with me on Thursdays. It's a great compliment. You're gonna get boom, boom, boom. We're ta talking about the alignment, the muscular endurance, core strength, all of those wonderful things that are complementary and supplementary benefits to the workouts that they're already doing. Sarah, you mentioned briefly in the intro, I'm a master trainer um, for the format Rock the Bar, which blends bar fitness with belly dance technique. Mm. And that's all focused on hip movements in all three dimensions. It's great conditioning training for belly dancers, but frankly, it's great conditioning training for absolutely anyone because all of us need hip mobility in three planes of motion. Most of us don't have enough of it. Most of us don't train our hips as multidirectionally as we should. So I talk a lot about that and the benefits about hip health to preventing things like low back injuries and low back pain, which is one of the leading causes of hospitalization year after year in the United States. So we, we hook people in with something like that we get them to try a class or two and most of them stick around because it's such a lovely experience and as my lovely uh, ladies have already said they walk out feeling amazing and what other programming um do you combine with with bar kia what other modalities are you guys doing strength i know you mentioned that you long time ago and probably still do step and different modalities that integrate smoothly with a bar class Things that seem seamless, Pilates, of course, there's lots of the same or similar movement patterns and muscle groups that are being targeted. And Pilates, Joseph Pilates started that to rehabilitate or physical therapy for dancers, very similar to the Lottie Burke method, but then also yoga because we're using the same equipment or exercise accessories. So why not fluidly transition them in to Siri's point or what someone mentioned in the chat? How about bar and cycle, utilizing the, the, cycle, bar, the cycle bike as your bar? Now, when we say bar, not everyone has the resources to have an actual mounted bar or even portable bar, but a stabilized surface, we often call, times call a bar. I may be an old head or stickler. If you're not gonna use some kind of bar, why well, call it bar, call the class something else so that if I come to you from out of town, I kind of have an idea of what I'm getting myself into. But Sarah, to your point, and maybe the previous question of how do we get you know, people who identify as male or cisgender to be more comfortable in our classes, really explaining how this is sport therapy as well. 
like how I can use bar based exercises for my male golf players to help them get additional rotation so that they have great turn and rotation or follow through with their golf swing. Representation matters. Trisha was on the roll to this. Representation matters. So sure, I can tell a cisgender, cisgendered male yeah, men should do bar because it makes your feet, ankles, and knees stronger for when you're on the basketball court. Would they believe me at five foot four who can't dunk on them? No. But if I showed them representation of, hey, Shaquille O'Neal actually does bar inspired workouts, everybody wants to be like Shaq in his prime. If I show them an image of a lacrosse team that's actually at the bar, B A W R E, doing bar workouts, yeah, they'll be like, okay, maybe she's right about this. You mean to tell me Cristiano Ronaldo does bar-based workouts? Who doesn't want to look like Cristiano Ronaldo? So representation matters, but also integrating the sport therapy because typically men identify more with sports than they do with dance. That was the generalization, but you get my drift. So um, what, what I've heard is we want to make sure to personalize it and, and tell our stories. That's that's one of a big thing that I see from social media is people want to know who you are and what you do. But if that's not who you are, if you are five four, you know, <laughs> kicking ass, but maybe you know Take somebody else can't baby. relate to you. Draw upon those public figures, pull them in and expand your reach. And like Siri said, have a landing page, have a place where you can drive them to collect their information. And one of the great ways to do that is get them to enter to win. Give them something that they can, that they can give away. We do a wonderful thing where um, we'll do a contest. You know, what's, what is your number one reason that you want to attend Boston Mania? And we're going to pull three lucky winners. And we're actually doing that for Boston Mania. So if you go to the SCW site, throw something in there, and we're going to have three winners. But doing something like that, you can capture their information to hang on to them. I think that that's really good. Elizabeth, what have you found to be effective? And I'm going to ask you this. Let's not look at social media. What other modalities, what other things do you do that really help to drive attendance to your program? People love to try before they buy. They really mm -hmm. do. And there are so many amazing fitness programs out there right now that they have to feel it. So sometimes if you if you invite people to a program and, and like Kia said, you know, you know, we could talk about, you know, giving something, you know, maybe a different name. We can call it bar or not call it bar, but I think one of the best things you can do is invite people to be part of a community. So it doesn't necessarily have to be try a free class. It could be, you know, are you looking to, you know, work out with, you know, like minded people? Um, you know, one of the things that I talk about, you know, having had, um, you know, surgery is, is the inner athlete. Like when you need to train from the inside out, like these are the things that I have to pay attention to. But if someone will show me the way that I can work around those issues, it's going to be great. So if that's the community of people that somebody needs to work with, they're going to be more likely to do it. So any opportunity that you can connect with people, not just for um, a free class, they want more people are craving connection in person online that has been what has has saved so many people so allowing them to feel like genuinely part of something that's going to be where they stay and when they feel that they're a part of it then okay now maybe i'll give you a follow on social media or maybe you know i'll commit to sharing you know my e my email address or maybe you know giving you some additional referrals but however you build your community best in person, social media or something hybrid, that's how you can really make a difference because it's not just about how they feel with with me if I'm their, their trainer or their instructor. They need to feel that they're a great fit of a community of people where they're, it's inclusive, all different ages, shapes and sizes, all of the things and people are really gonna say, you know what girl, good job today. You know, well absolutely there's room for you at our table. When they feel that, then they're gonna be more likely to try all the things. Yeah, and they're all connected somehow. Yes. I mean, yes. you, you know, you wanna be inclusive, 
but they've all got, maybe they just love the music that the instructor is playing. Some type of connection going on. And, and I heard that from uh, Trisha as well. She was talking about um, consistency. Consistency will help build that community energy. You know, I look at, you know, look at a group like the Rolling Stones. You know, how do you have a group that's been together over 50 years and not have an enormous following? If you can be consistent in your classes and have great longevity yourself as an instructor, it builds, it slowly builds and they recommend people. Um, how can we expand our teaching skills, Tricia? Um, and what other modalities would you integrate with bar training? Um well, I'll start with the second question because that's an easy one. I think a lot of different formats uh, fuse well together. Uh, Pedal and Pulse is something I've been teaching for, uh, gosh, eight years now. It's one of the most successful fusions of bar. I love Yoga Sculpt or Yogi Bar. Uh, Kia actually teaches arguably one of the best uh, Yogi Bar, Yoga Sculpt workouts you can find. Same thing with Siri. I, I think you can fuse any uh, form, cardiovascular, strength training. I think you can fuse any of them as long as it feels like there's a reason for fusing them. Sometimes I think clubs see bar and it's sort of the cash cow at a club for the most part. And I say this with all the love and respect I can to anybody listening. If you're teaching bar and it's not full, it's you. I mean, I hate to say it, but bar taught well is something that really works for a lot of different bodies and a lot of different humans. And so what happens is in a successful club where bar is big, they start to fuse it with things, bar and this and bar and that. But when you fuse something, you have to figure out what, why you're doing it and are you using it as an entry drug for people to try Cycling, or are you using it as an entry point for people to try bar? So there just has to be a reason for creating a fusion. You don't want to just mesh things together, in my in my opinion. Uh, the other thing I'd say in terms of how to get more education, I think it's important for people to understand more is more. So when you're learning, whether it's bar or you're learning uh, strength training, whatever it is you're doing, you're never going to take the first training. So we even say this in bar above. Once you've done bar above, and this is your, say this is the first education you do, I oftentimes send them to Abby's SCW bar certification, or I send them to the Physique 57 bar education. There's no reason to put blinders on and just see one system because science is evolving, consumers, consumers' um, cravings, what they're liking and what they're enjoying is evolving. So we need to evolve with it and not fight this thing where we're like, all we're doing is bar and this is the way I do bar and it's not gonna change. So to me, it's just about keeping your mind open to more education, more concepts. And just remember that once you learn a format, everyone's if everyone's teaching bar, a bar class has a strength, has a, I'm sorry, a squat, a lunge, a plie, it's all the same thing, right? A bar class is a bar class, like a bar class. What makes it different is how you make them feel. And maybe you make them feel better because of your knowledge. Maybe you educate them. Maybe you're that instructor. Maybe you make them feel better because of how you select your music. Maybe you make them feel better because you create an inclusive environment. Maybe you make them feel better because you show up dressed in a way that makes them feel comfortable. So to me, your education, like if you look at an SCW mania schedule and you're a bar instructor, what I highly recommend you do is is go to one or two bar sessions a day, but look around because all of those other sessions, whether you're studying nutrition or you're studying um, HIIT training or you're, whatever it is that's offered, everything's on that schedule. All of that education just positively impacts your mm -hmm. instruction, if even in a bar class. So try to keep your eyes as open as you possibly can and, and constantly be looking for educational opportunities. And it's really nice when you come out of somebody's class that you haven't taken before. Like I, I took this great uh, Dristy Beach yoga class when at Mania. And it's like, you come out so inspired and you can always pull something, you know what I mean? You can always pull something out of it. Um, 
I, I did speak a little bit about aqua bar and I did a, I created a class called Barracuda, which is in the pool. And when we first started doing water aerobics, you weren't jumping around with your arms out of the water and doing fun little swishes and you didn't have aqua dump. We had nothing. It was, oh my gosh, it was over 40 years ago. All we had was holding onto the side of the pool like a ballet bar and doing toning for your legs. And then we got noodles. Ooh, that was exciting. If they were chewed up by the kids and we could use that, the, um, the noodle as a bar. And it really, it was very creative. And it's, it's if you, I, I know a lot of us, most of us don't teach aqua, but if you're interested in teaching a new class, it is a great program because you're in a totally different modality, but you can do the exact same exercises and it's a little bit slower and water is 12 times the resistance of air. It's all around you. And according to the CDC, um, the chlorine and bromine in water has six times the strength that will kill the coronavirus as well as other viruses and bacteria. So you get in, you like, you know, dunk your hands, dunk your noodles. It's like you're sterilized. I don't recommend drinking it, but you're sterilized, right? And you just keep yourself six feet apart. And the nice thing about the circulation in a pool area is every six minutes, the air exchange has to happen. Where on land, to adhere to CDC guidelines, it's got to be every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, according to OSHA. But in the pool, it's got to be six minutes or you get that mold. So it's a very safe environment. It's one of the first areas that people have returned to in the clubs is the pool and in strength training and in bikes. And everybody on this panel has mentioned, what did you call it, Tricia? It's- um, What is or it? Biker bar. Pedal biker and bar. Biker oh, bar or pedal and pulse. Yeah. yeah, pedal and pulse. Great stuff. And then the strength training combination works really well. And mind body yoga training has been found to have so many um, psychological benefits, like that Siri and Elizabeth do. I mean, that's very, very cool. It's really interesting. Um, if I were asking you guys to give me, we're of course, like as usual, I feel like we're always running out of time. You guys get about 30 seconds each. Okay, Siri, I'm starting with you. Give me your clothes, baby. Make it strong. Oh my gosh. You didn't give me a question. That was just an open-ended close. That's a tough one. <laughs> well, listen, friends, I think as with everything else in fitness, we have to lead by example. So if you haven't tried bar yet, if you're not a bar instructor, go try it. And then if you sort of catch that, you know, if it kind of bites you and you're like, wow, this is amazing. Then you go get certified and start spreading the message to your people. We lead by example. If you're already a bar instructor, I want to plus one what Trisha said, take other bar sessions, certifications, online workshops, every, and even outside of bar and other modalities and challenge yourself to look at it through the eyes of what could I take from this training? That's a nutrition lecture or an Instagram lecture, right? Or uh, the science of strength training session. What could I take from this that I could feed back to my students to add more value to them? One of the things I love about uh, teaching bar is because we stay longer in one position, like I said earlier, I have more time to impart education on them. So bar is the format where I give them the most information about their own bodies and give them a little bit of science and explain complementary muscle groups and all that kind of stuff. So use that to your advantage. Great. That's great. Great. Kia. Yeah. So we're all here because we have something in common. Maybe that's our attractiveness to bar. And I want you to utilize that as an opportunity to network and to get to know each other. So if you will, maybe look at the top of your screen at all the numbers and names going by and find one person you don't already follow online and do so now. Connect with that person, network and learn more about bar and whatever else floats their boat. Y'all take good care. That's great. Thank you. And Elizabeth? Ooh, I, my three takeaways, um, Kia just hit one of those, connection. Definitely connect, uh, find the people, places, things, programs that you connect with. If you have not found it yet, it is out there 100%. And you can do that through my second takeaway, which is education. My mom always said, Elizabeth, that education is one of those things that will always be yours and can never be taken away from you. So we are all educators at heart. If you are on this webinar, then you value education too. So whether your education um, is online or in person or in combination, we couldn't 
couldn't encourage you any more to become so super educated and really um, explore things outside of your comfort zone. Go to that class at a show that you don't even have any idea what it is because like Sarah said, you will find it's gonna be a move, it's gonna be a cue, there's gonna be something that lights you up that you didn't know about. And then the last one, oh, you know it's gonna come about feeling. Everything is about how things feel. You've got to move with meaning and if you are not sure about bar, I now throw down the challenge towel at you and give it a try and notice how your body feels after a few sessions not just the aesthetics but can you stand taller do you feel better can you function better and then follow the things that make you feel good and trisha gosh all of that is so well said i think just in summary there's no other workout like bar that can serve all people of every age, all people of every fitness level, all people of all genders. And I think what we can do with BAR is try to move the needle a little bit, make this, make this workout open to all humans in, in, our, in our approach, in our marketing, in our language, in our conversations, in our dress, in our appearance. Uh, see what we can do because it is a doable workout. So there's very few other places in your facility right now that you could send somebody who's brand new to exercise mm -hmm. and have them feel really successful. So yeah, uh, yeah let's let's make it's it happen. It's interesting. It's like, and none of you, which I find fascinating, you said safe. You know, we always think safe and effective. You know what? It's a given. It's a given. I'm going to end this this webinar with a different video. You know why I'm so sick of watching the mania videos? Aw. Okay, here we go, guys. This is a good one. there's a silver lining. So we do have 10 positives from the pandemic. I wish you all a good night. I thank you, Trisha, Elizabeth, Kia, and Siri for helping. Thank, Beth, you. thank you for running this. Thank you all for joining in. We will see you on Thursday. Jeff Howard is my guest host because I'm going to visit my children in Boston on an airplane with a mask. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming.